know somebody called Lorna? The chances are you probably do. But did you realize that the name came from a very, very popular 19th century novel, Lorna Doone, by Richard Doddridge Blackmore? He created the name Lorna for his novel, and it has remained a popular girl's name ever since. Lorna Doone was first published in the year 1869, and it came out in a very expensive three-volume edition. It didn't do very well at all. However, it came out one year later in a much, much cheaper one-volume edition, and it took off like a rocket. Suddenly, everybody was reading Lorna Doone. People wanted to go and see the places connected with the novel. Lorna Doone is a novel set in the 1700s, and so it is an historical novel. It's also a romance, and it is set in the very beautiful part of England called Exmoor, which is today the smallest national park in the country. Beautiful views, little ponies wandering around, really gorgeous villages. It's a stunning part of the world, and I can really recommend that you visit it and follow the Lorna Doone Trail that you can do around the area. There are many reasons to read Lorna Doone. You get history from it, and you learn a lot about the uprisings of the time, the lawlessness in parts of the country that were rather remote. The Dunes are a very wild clan who take the law into their own hands and obey nobody else. So it's also a very, very passionate love story. The hero, John Ridd, who we first meet as a young boy, falls in love with the beautiful Lorna Doone. And of course, he can't marry her because she's part of that infamous Doone clan, which actually killed John Ridd's father. But finally, you learn all sorts of secrets about Lorna's background, and there is a wedding. The wicked Carver Doone tries to shoot Lorna on her wedding day. I've taken tour groups to the wonderful little church in a tiny village called Orr, O-A-R-E. And uh, you can actually see the window through which Carver Doone is said to have shot Lorna. It's a, a fabulous visit to make to that really beautiful little church. So uh, it's a, a, a wonderful novel when it comes to a love story as well. It's got plenty of drama and excitement, shootings and chases and danger and all the rest of it packed into what is a long novel. But for me, one of the reasons really for reading Lorna Doone is because of the very, very beautiful nature descriptions. Uh, Blackmore, is he had a real appreciation of the English countryside. Uh, he knew plants and trees extremely well. And he's a wonderful nature writer. Uh, he describes one particularly bitter winter when John Ridd and his family, and John as a farmer, are virtually trapped indoors for months because of the very heavy snow. And you feel quite cold just reading those scenes in the novel because Blackmore makes them really come alive. So the nature descriptions in the novel are truly beautiful and I think a very, very good reason for reading the book. Now, when uh, Lorna Doon became such an incredible bestseller, people started to travel to that part of England, uh, to Exmoor, in order to see the places associated with the novel. And you can see a little Lorna Doone trail book guide, uh, which was very typical of the things that were produced at that time that told people how to find the places associated with the novel. You can visit the Lorna Doone Hotel and have a nice cream tea there. You can see a statue of the character Lorna Doone. You can see the spot where John Ridd's farm was supposed to stand. You can see the waterfall as he slides down when he first meets Lorna. So there are all these different places that are associated with the novel. Richard Doddridge Blackmore was a very shy man who really, I think, in many ways was a slightly reluctant novelist. He kept producing novels, but most of his other books have sunk from sight. You can occasionally find one in the secondhand bookstore. I did read a couple of them after falling in love with uh, Lorna Doone, but I was pretty disappointed. They were very average novels, and you can really understand why they are not read or 
for sale in uh, republished editions today. But Lorna Doon is the book that lasted. Blackmore was an incredibly keen gardener. He was actually much more proud of his orchard of fruit trees than he was of any of his novels. So he gardened in the summer and he wrote novels in the winter when his garden did not need so much attention. So as I say, perhaps a slightly reluctant novelist, but certainly one who is remembered for that one truly fabulous book. The other thing that he puts into his novel are regional dialects. So uh, he was sort of following Sir Walter Scott in doing that. He had a good ear for local dialects and words. So that too is another reason for reading Lorna Doon. Lorna Doon is perhaps not much read today. It has been filmed. There are many different film versions of the book. And those, of course, are great fun to watch. But do consider rereading the book. I don't know if it will encourage you to reread it when you hear that it was Bush Ranger Ned Kelly's favourite novel. Perhaps he related a little bit too strongly to those wicked dunes. However, in 1906, it was chosen amongst male students at Yale University as their favourite novel of all time. So this is a book that has been enjoyed by millions of readers around the world. I love reading Lorna Doon. I revisit it every so often, as I say, really for the beauty of the writing and the sense of actually travelling to Exmoor when you read the book. I hope that I have encouraged you to visit Lorna Doon and Lorna Doon Country. <laughs>